welcome to Warren Church. Hope you guys had a great week. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone who is watching us and who is visiting us for the very first time. I would like to say that we're excited to have you here. This is going to be an exciting, and I say exciting time in the presence of God. And as you listen, I pray that the good Lord bless you. I would want to invite the Holy Spirit to come bring and dwell with us as we go into the prayer session. And um, I'll be back. Hello, church. Good morning. Let's pray. I will just begin to appreciate God for his goodness, for his kindness. The psalmist says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, and his mercies endure it forever. So it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Say, praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. We could keep on reading and reading, and you will see how good God has been. So I want somebody to just appreciate God. Give him all the glory. Bless his name. Father, you are worthy. You are awesome. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. If not for the Lord, the word of God says, if not for the Lord, I don't know what would have been. But the word of God tells me that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, to destroy but God has come to give us abundant life. Can somebody that has received abundant life in Christ just begin to appreciate God? Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful. We appreciate you from the depth of our heart. We exalt you because you are the highest authority. You are the most high. You are the king of all kings. You are God of our lives. You are God of our soul. We appreciate you. You sit in the heavens. You control the affairs of the earth. Nothing takes you by surprise. Can somebody just begin to appreciate God? He is good. He is kind. He is wonderful. He has been our support. He is our helper. He is our banner. He is the strong tower. Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you so much. Blessed be your name as we pray in the name of Jesus. My brother, my sister, the word of God says, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This morning we have come in the name of the Lord. And we have come in the name of the Lord. The word of God says, Let us come, therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. We are setting the throne of grace boldly and in the name of the Lord. Can somebody begin to say, Yes, in the name of Jesus, I come boldly to the throne of grace this morning. I come to assess the throne of grace this morning. I come to assess the throne of God this morning. Father, thank you for the grace over my life. Thank you for your blood that has given me entrance. Thank you for your blood that has given me liberty. Thank you for your blood that has given me free access to you. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I come with all boldness because I understand and I know indeed that you are my Father. You have redeemed me by your blood. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to read from the Bible book. Of Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. It says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I want you to have this in mind, that with men it may be impossible, but with God all things are possible. This one, I want us to begin to pray concerning our health. Anybody, whether you are healthy, even though you are, whatever situation of health you are undergoing right now, I want us to begin to pray in the name of Jesus, I walk in good health. In the name of Jesus, I walk in sound health. With men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. It is possible for God to handle my health. In the name of Jesus, I am well. In the name of Jesus, I am healthy. I walk in sound health. I walk in sound health. Every complication in my system receives health in the name of Jesus. Every complication in my body receives health in the name of Jesus. My mind is healthy. My body is healthy. In the name of Jesus. Every compromise to, of health in my body, in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus gives me accurate health. I walk in accurate health. I walk in full health by the blood of Jesus. Remember the word of God says, by his stripes we are healed. In the name of Jesus, I decree that by his stripes I am healed. I'm healed from every infirmity. I'm healed from every sickness. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I'm healed from every diseases. I am healed from every infection. Every virus infection. Every bacterial infection. I am healed in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to decree over our families. Our family is healed. Our family is healed. Anyone suffering any health challenge, we begin to decree as one church, as a unit, as a member, as a family. We decree that we are healed. 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 
we decree that we, are, we enforce our healing by the blood of Jesus. We enforce our healing because it is our right and our covenant rights in Christ. In the name of Jesus, we are healed because we are, we, we, we died with Christ. We are resurrected unto life. We have abundant life. Therefore, we decree to every members of our body that they receive life in the name of Jesus. We speak to our organs that our organs work and function optimally. Our organs work in health. Our organs are sound in the name of Jesus. My heart is sound. My lungs is healthy. Healthy. My, my kidneys works well. My blood flows well. My mind is sure. Everything about me is healthy. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to decree that our youth are renewed like that of the eagles. Our youth are renewed like that of the eagles. That is the word of God concerning you. My youth are renewed. My youth is renewed like that of the eagles. My youth is renewed like that of the eagles. In the name of Jesus, my youth is renewed like that of the eagles. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you. Thank you indeed for sound health. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to read from the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. The word of God says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. At this time, at this time, we really need the word of God to dwell in us richly. At this time, you really, really need the word of God to guide your heart. So the word of God is saying in Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, say, let the word of God, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. So if I want somebody to begin to pray, Lord, in this season, as I study your word, as I hear your word from the mouth of your servant, I begin to decree that the word of God will be enlarged in me. The word of God will dwell in me richly. The word of God will grow in me in the name of Jesus. The word of God will fortify me. The word of God will keep me in the name of Jesus. The enemy that prows about wanting to steal God's word from the heart of people will not have access to my heart. In the name of Jesus, I live by the word. I operate by the word. In the name of Jesus, the word of God guides my step. He said the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Indeed, the word of God is a light unto my path. The word of God is a lamp unto my feet. In the name of Jesus, I am not, I am, I am, I'm not empty of the word of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. The word of God guides my family. The word of God guides my business. The word of God guides my health. The word of God guides my mind. The word of God secures my person. In the name of Jesus, the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The word of God prepares me. The word of God emb uh, embraces me. The word of God builds an edge round about me. The word of God builds fires round about me. The word of God builds the edge of protection round about me. I am secured in the word of God. Father, we thank you because your word keeps us. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray for our members, for the finances of our members. I want us to pray for the finances of our members in one church. Let's begin to decree in the name of Jesus that our members in this season, in this season, their harvest is a hundredfold. The, the word of God made me to understand that a sower went to sow the seed. You know, some fell on good grass and some fell on stony grass and whatever. Let's pray that this seed that our members will sow in this season will fall on good grounds. They will reap, they, they, they will reap in hundredfolds. They will reap in abundance folds in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus. In this season, our members, they yield in abundance. Every seed that is sown in whatever business, in the name of Jesus, there is abundance for us. The earth becomes fruitful for us. In the name of Jesus, the works of our hand prospers. The works of our hands prospers. In the name of Jesus, we bind, we come against every spirit of loss in this season. In the name of Jesus, our businesses are productive. In the name of Jesus, our transactions are successful. In the name of Jesus, every man, every woman in one shall become successful. We ask for covenant ideas that God gives us covenant ideas in this season. God gives us covenant ideas to do things in the name of Jesus, do things that will bring forth good profit in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because the heavens are opened over the works of our hands. Thank you because the heavens are opened over the works of our hands in the name of Jesus. Thank you because there is excellence in our business. There's excellence in our results. We, are, we make a difference in the business world. In the name of Jesus, we have ideas to make a difference in this. We are preferred in the business world. We are preferred in the business world. We are productive. We are profitable in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because the heavens are opened over us and the rains of blessings are being released upon our businesses. Upon
upon our lives. We are a blessing to this generation. We are a blessing to our society. We are a blessing to our environment. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we begin to pray for divine protection? For every members of our family that in our going out we are secured. Remember that the lockdown has been lifted. In our going out we are secured. In our coming in we are secured. We declare that the angels of the Lord they take charge over us. The word of God says He will give His angel charge over us. We will not dash our feet against any stone. Well, we let's begin to decree divine protection, divine protection in the name of Jesus. We are marked with the mark of Christ. We are exempted from evil. We are exempted from accidents. We are exempted from incidents in the name of Jesus. We go out in safety we come back in safety in the name of jesus we have the backing of the heavens the angel of god is preserve us in the name of jesus father in the name of jesus we decree that a thousand falls at our side and ten thousand at our right hand it shall not come near us we dwell in the secret place of the most high we abide under the shadow of the almighty in the name of jesus god is our security at this time god is our protector at this time in the name of jesus our lot will not be the lot of evil. Our lot will not be the lot of bloodshed. Our lot will not be the lot of mourning. Only rejoicing in our in our in our environment. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We decree, O oh God, a canopy of divine protection over every member of our church. We decree divine protection over our household. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you all the glory. Let's begin to appreciate God. He's been good. He's been kind. We are. We have a confidence in Him that He answers us whenever we pray. Father, thank you for answering prayers take all the glory take all the honor you alone are worthy to be praised as we pray in jesus mighty name amen god bless you all hey guys and i know our prayers has been answered already yes yeah, so we're going into the worship section and hope you guys are ready to worship god with all of your heart and give him everything as you have come to him in worship today and i pray that as you worship him today may the good lord bless you in jesus name amen you've done so much for me i cannot tell it all now if i had ten thousand tongues Still be
Praise God. Welcome to another Sunday service, uh, our third in the month of May. I hope uh, the month has been a blessing to you um, as we prayed earlier. Trust also, uh, you know, you're enjoying your time at home. If you're, you know, spending time at work, you're keeping safe. Uh, the kids largely have been uh, studying at home. Um, so I hope, <laughs> I know for a lot of parents, that hasn't been the most enjoyable experience. But all of this will pass by the grace of God. Uh, just to mention again that it's important that you uh, ensure that the kids watch their age group services. So if you look in the comment section, you should see, um, you know, different links for different age groups. Um, please help them put there's on their devices um, and if you don't have uh, multiple devices in the house uh, then as soon as this service is over please also ensure that they watch their age group services it will uh, you know benefit them um, greatly uh, also don't forget to follow us on social media if you are watching this on youtube subscribe there's also a reminder bell there you could always always just can you just click that um, so that you know when the next service uh, or services are coming on uh, if you're on, it's on instagram follow us um, same applies to facebook let's build our social media community i'm saying that to every member of one church um, also to our friends who are watching with us help us to build this platform i think one of the um things that have come to fall in light of the pandemic and the lo associated lockdowns were the fact that or is the fact that the church needs to be much more visible than it is um, on digital platforms and we are working um, strongly along those lines to improve ourselves on all our platforms god bless you as you do that uh, also invite friends send the link out for today's service and I'm sure they'll come back to say thank you for that. I want to speak this morning um, in, in line with, you know, the, the thought from last week, which is prayer, prayer life. Uh, I want to speak on the subject warfare strategies, warfare strategies, warfare strategies. If you uh, were with us a few services ago, I think that was in lay late um, April in one of our midweek services we spoke about the armor of God you know um, and and some of that or that largely had to do with our place um, in prayer but one scripture was emphasized and I want us to look at that um, Ephesians 6 Ephesians 6 yep and verse 12 Ephesians 6 and verse 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual uh, principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual darkness in high places. Amen. Some will say that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Amen. They are mighty through God. Sorry, that is 1 Corinthians 10. Let's also look at that. 1 Corinthians... Uh, sorry, did I say first? 2 Corinthians 10. And if you see verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare... That is the key word here. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. And this is essentially uh, the same thing Ephesians 6.12 is echoing. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 
I mean, it goes on to talk about casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, um, you know, and bringing into captivity every disobedience once yours, once yours is complete. But I want to focus largely on the warfare subject for now. I believe that everyone that engages in warfare must engage in warfare thoughtfully, engage in warfare deliberately, engage in warfare consciously. So warfare is not something that you, you know, rush into or stumble into. Uh, before any general, before any army goes to war, they decide on a battle plan. They decide on their strategy. They locate the enemy. They discuss how they plan to route the enemy. In fact, how they plan to approach the enemy. In some cases, how they plan to come around the enemy and approach from behind. Amen. All of that stuff. Bottom line is that they settle on a strategy. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, the battle plan needs to be well defined well-defined, well-thought-out. It helps you know the enemy, it helps you exploit the weaknesses of the enemy, and it helps you maximize your strengths. I want you to get that right. It helps you know the enemy, it helps you exploit his weaknesses, it helps you maximize your strength. Otherwise, you just go into battle anyhow. Uh, first, uh, uh, first Corinthians uh, Nine, I believe, is where Paul talks about, you know, I don't, I don't box like one that beats the air. <laughs> yeah? I don't, I don't fight like one that is sparring. I don't just jump in. Every boxer decides on a battle plan. Yeah? No serious boxer just jumps into the ring and then starts punching. <laughs> When, when, when the enemy sees that, he just smiles because he realizes you don't have a battle plan uh, and then he just looks for your weak spots. If you, if you ever watched, I mean, you, if you watch wrestling, one thing you see commonly is, you know, the minute a wrestler realizes that his opponent is injured, he starts to focus on that injury. Why? Because he has identified a weakness. If you identify a weakness and you then focus on other things, you are not exploiting the enemy's weakness. So it's important that we have our own battle plan, our own understanding as believers as we go into the battlefield called prayer. You need to think like you are in the army. Thinking otherwise affects your body language and allows the devil to take advantage of you. And that brings the big question. Pastor, are we still engaging in warfare? Are we still fighting? Yeah? I thought the Bible says in uh, Colossians, Colossians 2.15, that is, let me read it to us. It says, and having spoiled principalities, and this is all past tense, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it and that is the truth that is the fact jesus christ has spoiled principalities and powers when he died on the cross he put a nail in the devil's coffin when he died on the cross he stole the sting of death and the victory of the grave amen however the enemy being who he is will always try to stage a comeback. Whenever an army wins a war, they uh, stage an occupation. Yeah, they, they leave an, uh, an, an occupying army so that the devil doesn't stage a comeback. If you followed the war in uh, Syria and Iraq with ISIS and all of that, one thing you will note is as much as possible whenever the uh, you know, the allied forces won ground somewhere, they would leave forces there, yeah? And then the enemy resorted to what you call guerrilla warfare. So they would come in the night, you know, they would plant little bombs here and there, you know, uh, 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 you know find vantage positions to shoot soldiers from, 
and stuff like that and that's what the enemy tries to do knowing that he has been defeated already we'll always try to you know pop shots throw fiery darts you know stage war, uh, stage raids at night you know and little things like that like scripture says while men slept the enemy came and sowed tears amongst the wheat and that really is what happens the devil is looking for us to sleep looking for us to become ignorant looking for us to lose our understanding of our position and our place in christ so that he can take advantage of that i hope somebody um, is being blessed already okay if you go to uh, first peter 5 8 i want to highlight something first peter 5 8 and my point is that the devil's strategy is built around keeping you from knowing the truth the devil's strategy is built around keeping you from knowing the truth first peter 5 8 I want to read from the Berean Study Bible. It says, be sober-minded and alert. You see that word? Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. I happen to watch uh, National, Geogra National Geographic a lot. It's one of my favorite channels. Yeah, and uh, many a times they focus on, uh, you know, animals. Maybe they go to a conservation, um, or they just go into the wild to study uh, and observe how animals interact. And one very interesting animal is the hyena. <laughs> The hyena is not the strongest of animals, but the hyena is very pretty sharp up there. <laughs> and so I've seen instances where hyenas kill a lion. And the same applies, of course, to the lion versus other animals, tiger versus other animals, cheetah and what have you. There is a commonality. They look for the weakest in the pride. They look for the weakest in the pack. They look for the weakest in the group. The Bible is going, uh, sorry, the devil is going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. It means that he can't devour just anyone. He's looking for a specific type. He's looking for the weak. He's looking for the sleeping. He's looking for the ignorant. Them that, those who don't know their place in Christ. And so what the animal then, then does is that he stages a scare or fakes an approach, heads towards the pack, and the minute, it could be buffaloes, it could be anything, the minute all of them start running in one direction, gradually the weak one starts to become isolated. And trust me, the attacking animal does not have his eyes on the whole group. He has already identified the weak one. He has studied and observed, and he goes for the kill. So in all of that group running, you just notice the, the lion or the cheetah or the hyena is targeting one particular animal. <laughs> yeah? So it says, be sober minded and be alert i love the message translation it says keep a cool head stay alert the devil is poised to pounce he's in pouncing position and would like nothing better than to catch you napping <laughs> or another one i've seen is when maybe a deer you know goes to the riverside to drink and just dips the whole head in the water and is just drinking and is oblivious of the situation around. In fact, I've seen instances where there is a crocodile in the very water the deer is dipping from, but he hasn't been observant enough, just dips the head in there and it's just, you know, and the croc just bites the, <laughs> bites the head and pulls it into the water. <laughs> And that is what we look like really when we don't have a prayer life or a prayer relationship with God and even beyond that 
we are not conscious of what the devil looks for when attacking a believer. He says he would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard. You are not the only one once plunged into these hard times. It is the same with Christians and I dare say with everyone all over the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. We would not be urged to resist the devil and to use the weapons of our warfare if the devil was not going to be pulling out all his stops to derail you from God's promises. <laughs> He's simply fulfilling his job description as written in John 10.10. 10. The devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And will do whatever it takes to ensure that he keeps doing that. It is um, Sun Tzu who wrote The Art of War. I don't know if you've read that book. It's an old book, uh, but still very relevant. You know, there's a book, it's, it's a, not The War of Art. That's a separate book. The Art of War, Sun Tzu. And he said, and I quote, he that exercises no forethought he who exercises no forethought, but makes light of his opponent, is sure to be captured by them. That's another attitude. Oh, the devil doesn't matter. Oh, I can, you know, I can drop my guards. I can, yeah, I can, you know, I can choose to pray whenever I want. The devil is defeated already. He's under my feet. <laughs> you are in a position of responsibility as a believer. And any soldier will tell you that sometimes maintaining that position is more difficult than the victory itself. The United States now has been unable to exit some uh, uh, war fronts just because it needs to negotiate properly and ensure that the enemy does not stage a comeback and lay to waste all of their efforts at war. I pray that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus, that your efforts will not be wasted, that the devil will not find a way into your home in the name of Jesus. But it takes us having a strategy for our warfare. It takes us going uh, beyond being reactionary Christians to being responsive, responsive. A reactionary Christian always waits for the devil to hit or attack first and then he reacts. That's no position of responsibility. What happens then is that the devil has done the damage and then you are trying to fix things. God wants us to be in the place where we already know and sense the devil's attacks, the devil's scheming, the devil's wiles, and we're able to respond. And so I want to speak to uh, some strategies that we need to understand as believers. And hopefully I'll touch on one or two of them today and then pick up on the others. Your number one strategy as a believer in the place of warfare is that you must reject fear. You must reject fear. I'll say it again, you must reject fear. Fear opens a door into our lives, into our hearts, and allows the devil to exploit. Fear, as far as I'm concerned, along with ignorance, are the devil's greatest weapons. These are the biggest doors. And the devil uses them to find a, a, a way into our lives and then things just go downhill from there. You must reject fear in the face of whatever, in the face of whoever, you must never as a believer, as part of your war stress, warfare strategy, open a door of fear in your heart. Indeed, scripture tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear. 
I want you to say to yourself, I, ha I do not have the spirit of fear. God has not given us, that is 2 Timothy 1.7, the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Fear is very destructive. Fear will rob you of your faith. It will rob you of your peace. Fear will keep you in defeat. Fear will keep you focused on the circumstances around you and not on the promises of God. Fear will keep you focused on the circumstances around you and not on the promises of God. We are told 100 times in scripture, fear not. Fear not. And like somebody said, until you start to see this as a command and not a piece of advice, you may never overcome that spirit of fear. I want you to just imagine God saying to you now, fear not. The same things he said to Joshua. Joshua was called to lead a new generation into the promised land. Moses had died. Joshua was walking in fear. And if you read in Joshua from around the sixth verse, you know, down to the eighth and all that, God kept telling him, fear not. Only be courageous. This is the one thing you need to do. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Study the book of the law. Don't let it depart from you. <laughs> See it as a command. When you wake up in the morning, remember that God is commanding you. Fear not. Whenever you are tempted to fear, speak to it. Reject the seed of fear that the devil may be throwing, in, uh, trying to plant in your heart. David was a man who understood this perfectly in warfare. The Bible says that Goliath came, and you can read that later uh, when service is over. The Bible says that Goliath came, and Goliath just planted a load of fear in the hearts of God's children. And they were shaking in their boots. And the Bible says they were weaning in their pants. And grown-up men <laughs> were cowed by, by, by uh, 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 his, his bragado and his, uh, you know, the, the noise and, and you know, uh, 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 how loud he sounded. Yes, he was a big man. <laughs> yeah? But if you, if you see the story... I mean, he just threatened and made noise. <laughs> and, and that is a warfare strategy. The opponent always tries to put in as much fear in the enemy as possible before the battle even starts. Before the battle even starts. You see the same played out in football stadia. Think of an atmosphere like Liverpool. Anfield, and they make such a legend of it and players come from all over the world and they are shaking in their boots and the whole stadium sorry for those who don't watch premiership football forgive my example <laughs> yeah Anfield in Liverpool and the whole stadium rises and sings that song you never walk alone and players have testified it is the craziest football atmosphere they've ever visited in many cases they've lost in their hearts before they kick a ball and that is what the devil tries to do he tries to show you contrary circumstances he tries to show you that god's word is not working and do all these things around you and he tries to defeat you before the first shot is even fired I pray for you strength. I pray for you strength in your heart that the devil not take advantage of this in the name of Jesus. Your immediate response in a troubled situation is likely to be fear. If you are not alert and aware of the devil's strategies. If you see in Luke chapter 8 and verse 50, let's look there quickly. Luke chapter 8 and verse 50. I want to show you that again. Luke chapter 8 and verse 50. In verse 49, the Bible says, While Jesus was speaking, there came one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. 
Shrobu not the master. Sorry, while the uh, uh, while the ruler of the synagogue who went to see Jesus to ask to help with healing his daughter, while he was talking to Jesus, his servants came and said, uh, "You know, your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master." But when Jesus heard him, he answered him, saying, "Fear not." <laughs> When you hear bad news, the first thing that is likely to happen is that you uh, uh, surrender to fear. And Jesus, knowing this, said to him quickly, fear not. Fear not. Someone calls you and says, heaven is going to fall. You are going to be sacked. Fear not. Fear not. Before you, before you process it, before you allow it to sink, fear not. David, every time Goliath spoke, David would speak back. <laughs> he would, as it were, quote God's word. Fear not. He was rejecting fear. He was shutting down that door. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, 2, that the same word that was preached unto us was also preached unto them. But the word that they heard did not profit them because it did not meet faith in their hearts when it got there. My assumption then is that it met fear in their hearts. When fear is in your heart, God's word can't work. It can't. When fear is in your, is in your heart, it will look like God's word doesn't work. It will look like God is not true to his word. But the truth is that you have already surrendered to fear. For everyone living under a weight of fear, this uh, morning, we bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. We command you to come out of that place and walk in the confidence that we have in Jesus Christ. I expect someone to say a big amen. God bless you. All right. So, you must reject fear. In Matthew 14 and the 30th verse, Peter was walking on water until he saw the strong winds and the waves <laughs> yeah Matthew 14 go and read that until he saw the strong winds I can assume that he he heard the wind you know you know what it sounds like when it's going to rain <laughs> has it happened to you before have you seen it before wait threatened to rain and things were lifted and moved and you hear wah, wah. yeah and things were being thrown all over the street and all of that and it didn't rain <laughs> And that's what the devil is like. <laughs> He'll do a show and make noise and, you know, orchestrate situations and circumstances around you. <laughs> but keep remembering that God is your rock and he's your salvation. He's your shield and he's your buckler. He's your great reward. Remember, he's your protection. Remember, his, the banner of, uh, his banner over you is love. Amen. Remember that you don't walk in lack. Remember all those things. And you keep throwing back the devil's lies. You need to be careful what you see and what you hear. They are what we call gates into the human spirit. Your sight, your hearing, your smelling, your tasting, your touching. These are things we call sensory perception. These are the things that come into our decision making. Your thinking right now and all your processing is a function of what you're smelling, what you're tasting, what you're uh, seeing, what you're hearing, and what you're touching. I mean, God forbid, imagine you were watching TV and started to smell gas. <laughs> Just imagine you're watching TV and someone, someone is watching TV and starts to smell gas. You think they're going to keep watching TV? <laughs> no. <laughs> they're not going to keep watching TV. Something changes. The thinking, proce the processing kicks in. The brain sounds an alarm. And that is what happens. You need to shut your gates to the devil. Because they are doorways of fear. They are also doorways of faith. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, but fear also comes by hearing. Hallelujah. Faith comes by seeing, but fear also comes by seeing. Pastor, what do you mean by seeing? 
comes by seeing the word of God, comes by hearing the word of God, comes by touching, tasting, whatever it is, and having that interaction and intimacy with the word of God. Very quickly, I'm going to share with us five ways I believe we can walk uh, uh, or deal with fear and then we will round up for today. Number one, learn to meditate on the word of God learn to meditate on the word of God. If you look at Joshua chapter 1, and I explained the scenario previously, God was giving Joshua an assignment that he, you know, he, 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 he thought was much bigger than he could handle. And that is the truth. It was much bigger than he could handle. What he had lost sight of was that it was God who was sending him. And God never sends us onto the battlefield uh, requiring us to pay our own bills. God sends us there and he backs us up. And he said in verse, um, in fact, from verse 6, in fact, let me start from verse 5. He said, there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong and be of good courage. For unto this people will you divide an inheritance or for an inheritance the land that I swore unto their fathers. Look at verse 7. Only, it means that this is key. Be strong and courageous that you may observe to do according to the law that Moses my servant commanded. Fear throws you off obeying God's word. Fear throws you into panic. And God said to him, there is a caveat. You will fulfill this assignment if you fear not and you embrace courage. I pray for someone today, a baptism of courage in the name of Jesus to pick up what God has asked you to do and to go out there and do it in spite of what people are saying, in spite of what you are hearing, in spite of the many doubts in your heart, in spite of the naysayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So be courageous. Meditate on God's word. Meditate on God's word. In verse 8, he then says, uh, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written therein. So shall thou make thy way prosperous and have good success success lies in our ability to meditate and hold on to what god's word says and refuse to fall for the lies of the devil hallelujah okay so that is number one number two of num number two way to deal with fear is to speak the word of god don't forget david did not keep quiet David did not keep quiet. Goliath would speak and he would speak back. Goliath would, you know, threaten and he would, he would speak back. And he just refused to allow... Uh, and he just refused to allow uh, Goliath to have the last word. Yeah? Refused to allow the devil to have the last word over your life and as you speak and as you confess god's word as you repeat god's promises you will see him literally fall away in the mighty name of jesus hebrews uh, 13 and verse 6 if you see hebrews uh, chapter 13 and verse 6 it says so that let me uh let me pick it up from let me pick it up from earlier. Hebrews 13. Um, you will see from verse 5. It says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So God has said, so that you can boldly say, 
God has said so that you can boldly say. And I want to encourage you to keep saying because in your saying, fear flees. Glory to God. <clears throat> okay, number three, rebuke fear. You need to rebuke fear. You need to be able to confront it, address it, and reject it in the name of Jesus. Fear is a spirit. Amen. Fear is a spirit. God has not given us the spirit of fear. And so for every and anyone who constantly labors under the weight of fear, today, before this service is over, we trust that that spirit packs its bags and is ejected from your heart in the name of Jesus. Learn to the same way David confronted what stood as fair before him in the form of Goliath. You need to learn to look at Gol your Goliath, whatever it is, and tell it today, I'm bringing you down, I'm cutting your head off, and I'm feeding it to the birds. Hallelujah. Learn to also pray in the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit learn to pray in the spirit and while that is a you know a whole big subject um uh, the bible says in in acts 2 you know uh when i mean jesus had gone and this was in the uh, upper room the day of pentecost that the holy spirit came upon uh, uh the disciples that were there uh, they were baptized in the spirit and as an evidence of that or an outflow of that they began to speak in other tongues amen and the uh, uh, tongues are a weapon that god gives to us to build us up jude verse 20 says uh, to pray in your most build up yourself in your most holy faith by praying in the holy ghost uh, there's a translation i think it's the amplified or jb phillips it says to charge yourself like a battery another one which should be amplified says to uh, build yourself up higher and higher like a gigantic edifice praying in the holy ghost and as you pray in the holy ghost and exercise your spiritual language you start to sense a deeper greater consciousness of the love of god consciousness of the presence of god and where god is darkness cannot stand you must also learn to walk in love walk in love bible tells us in first john 4 18 that perfect love casts out fear perfect love refuse to walk in offense refuse to be offended people hurt you you know get over it quickly people offend you get over it quickly where you're struggling ask for the help of the holy spirit to get over it if you realize how much hurt and damage you are doing to yourself by you know staying in offense you would get rid of it very quickly the devil would love you know, for you to just stay in offense and remember all the things and, uh, you know, that people did against you and how people hurt you and all of that. And remember all those things. But if you know that it only makes you toxic, it only hurts you, it only opens a door to the devil, then you will shut that door very quickly and you will forgive those who might have offended you. When you walk in perfect love, it by itself throws fear out whenever fear tries to invade your heart the fact that you are walking in the love of god rejects it and deals with it hallelujah praise god i hope that has been a blessing to you today i've uh, uh, one our number one warfare strategy that we've dealt with today is rejecting fear and five ways by which you can reject fear is to meditate on god's word speak the word, confront and rebuke the spirit of fear, pray in the Holy Spirit, and walk in love. And I pray that as you go about doing this, uh, as it becomes more natural to you, you will sense God's presence in greater measures and the absence of fear constantly in spite of troubled times in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah amen let's shout a big amen in the comment section glory to god hallelujah 
Amen. All right, let's go a step further like we always do. And let's just say a word of prayer. I want you to bow your heads. And wherever fear may be lurking in your heart over any matter, I want you to say to God tonight, uh, I want you to say to God today that you receive his love in your heart, that you reject that fear in the name of of Jesus. Father, I'm praying for my brothers, my sisters, young and old, wherever they may be listening to me today. I ask, oh Father, uh, uh, anyone who is laboring under the weight of fear, that right now you are free in the name of Jesus. I speak to that spirit of fear. Be gone in Jesus' name. There's a man who is uh, uh, tentative about bidding for a project because you say to yourself look even if i want the project where do i even want to start from and god is saying to you go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead as you engage the spirit of love as you engage your faith you will notice that that fear flees and god begins to work for all things to, uh, uh, to work together uh, for your good and that you will receive favor on this project like you have never seen before in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you because the, sp the spirit of fear is lifted over the hearts of men today and you alone are glorified. For this we give you thanks. We pray in Jesus' name and everyone said a big amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. Amen, amen, amen. All right. I want us to um, uh, also say a salvation prayer for anyone here today. You do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. The protection that we have is in the blood of Jesus. And when that blood does not cover us, we are like pray for the devil. And the devil takes advantage of us. The devil makes means meet. The devil wrecks your plans. The devil just stumps over you all day. And I want you to come under that banner of protection today by receiving the love of God into your heart and by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Can I just ask wherever you are that you please just uh, uh, put your, heart on your, your hand on your uh, heart and let us say this word of prayer together. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I ask, O oh Lord, that you come into my heart. I ask that you dwell in me by your Holy Spirit. I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me. I believe your blood was shed on the cross for me. I believe that it brought me salvation, and I received that salvation today. I ask, Father, that by this blood, my sins are washed away and I'm accepted into this new life. I give you praise, for I pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said a big amen. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome into a new life. If you have just accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, can I ask that you please use the link on the screen, or if you capture the QR code using your smartphone, uh, or the link in the comment section also. It should take you to a very short form um, for you to fill. The whole idea is so that we can reach out to you to congratulate you on uh, this new life, to also give you some counsel and some material that will help you grow in Christ, lest the devil take advantage of you. God bless you. You are welcome into this family of God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. I want us to take our offerings before we welcome uh, our guests today and close the service. Uh, on the screen, you should see uh, ways by which we can give in this online service. Our account details, um, also the USSD code format. Kindly take a minute uh, to open up your bank, uh, bank app or to use the code and sending an offering or a tithe. Uh, for the furtherance of God's work. Uh, the church has done a lot in this season to be of help to the community um, and it all happens because you are faithful in your giving. God bless you. Can I ask that we just say a word of prayer over our offerings um, as we give. Father Lord, we just come to say thank you. Thank you Lord for the 
privilege and the honor to be able to give to change lives. Father, as we give today, we cast our bread upon the waters according to your word. And you said after many days, it will come back to us. Father, I pray that no one in this season will be ashamed or disgraced in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that anyone who might be walking in the fear of job loss or loss of any sort, that that spirit of fear is cast out now in the name of Jesus and that your name is glorified in their lives. We thank you for the ability to give, to be a blessing. We ask, Lord, that you accept it. We pray in Jesus' mighty name and everyone said a big amen. Hallelujah. Lastly, I would love for us to welcome those who are new with us in this experience. We call one church, not just a church, but a family and an experience. And we hope that you have experienced a bit of that experience uh, uh, today. Uh, if you are worshiping with us for the very first time, can I ask that you please signify by leaving a comment in the comment section. I would love for one church members to just love on you and say thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. On the screen, you should see a QR code and a link. You should also see it in the comment section. Kindly click on it or capture the code. It will take you to a very short form. Please fill it out for us. We would love to call you to say thank you. We would love to call you to uh, let you know more about the things that we do and also know how we can be a blessing to you. And also hopefully when uh, uh, you know religious services resume uh, fully, we are able to welcome you in person and put a gift in your hands. Thank you so much. We are blessed by your presence today. We meet like this on Wednesdays for 6.30 p.m. and on Sundays for, um, for 9 a.m. Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, I pray you a great week ahead and look forward to seeing you at our midweek service on Wednesday. Amen. Uh, we close our services by taking a closing charge from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 18 and then 20 to 23. Proverbs 4, verses 18 and 20 to 23. And it goes thus, My path is as the shining light, shining ever brighter unto the perfect day. This week I pay attention to God's words. I incline my ears unto his sayings. His words don't depart from my eyes, I keep them in my heart, for his words are life to me and health to my body. This week I guard my heart with all diligence, for everything I do flows from it. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you um, this midweek, and I pray you a great week ahead in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.